What's some famous last words, you know? Here's one of my favorites. Check this out. I got my favorite shooter with me. And I got my favorite. And I got my favorite. With a $100,000 bounty on his head and more than one enemy out to get him, rapper FBG Duck was caught in a situation that eventually led to his death. As the investigation progressed, some people began to point fingers at another prominent rapper, King Von. Von ain't gonna touch shit. Von to get his wig split. However, a few months later, the case took an unexpected turn when King Vaughn was brutally murdered. Two men approach King Vaughn and his group in the parking lot, and an argument ensued. In the aftermath of the two brutal murders, the truth finally came to light. After a trial that lasted more than three months, a jury convicted six men for the murder of rapper FBG Duck. In today's video, I'll be pulling back the curtains on the deaths of these two rappers and revealing the truth about what happened. Final words of FBG Duck. The events leading up to FBG Duck's death were marked by a continued escalation of the lyrical and social media warfare between him and King Von. In a bold and controversial move, Duck released Dead Bitches. This song saw Duck directly insulting deceased members of the O Block and 600 sets, including individuals such as T, Roy, and OD. The track was a jarring reminder of the deep-seated animosity that existed, and it sent shockwaves through the Chicago music scene. The release of Dead Bitches in 2020 was perceived by many as crossing line, a violation of the unspoken rule against speaking ill of the dead. The song's chilling lyrics and Duck's fearless demeanor in the face of potential repercussions showcased his refusal to back down, even in the face of significant danger. This track was more than a diss. It was a declaration of war, one that many feared would have real-world consequences. Unknown to many, the daring lyrics of the song would turn out to be FBG Duck's final words to King Von, as well as the last nail in his coffin, Dead Bitches, starkly contrasted with the more conciliatory tone of a song FBG Duck had previously released titled Chicago Legends. Chicago Legends was a departure from his previous diss tracks, a moment that some perceived as a potential olive branch extended toward reconciliation. In this song, Duck paid homage to fallen figures from both sides of the gang divide, including individuals who were once his adversaries. He acknowledged the loss of Lil Durk's cousin Nuski and friend L.A. Capone, showing respect to the dead and suggesting that the cycle of violence could be broken. This track stood out as a poignant reflection on the cost of the street life that both Duck and Vaughn were entrenched in. The reactions from fans in the Chicago community were mixed. Some applauded Duck for his attempt to rise above the conflict, while others saw it as a sign of weakness. Unfortunately, things took a dark turn after the release of Dead Bitches. The ongoing social media exchanges between Duck and Vaughn continued to fuel the fire. Both artists used their platforms to taunt each other, with Vaughn making ominous comments on Duck's Instagram live sessions, referencing names of individuals that his gang was rumored to have killed. These interactions were not just petty online spats. They were public displays of a deep-rooted vendetta that was being played out for all to see. As the beef between them turned deadlier by the minute, King Von decided it was time to pull out all the stops and he allegedly placed a bounty on FBG Duck's life. Initially set at $50,000, this macabre price on Duck's head was purportedly doubled to a staggering $100,000, a sum that underscored the gravity of their feud. Although it wasn't Von who would eventually fire the shots that killed FBG Duck, it's impossible not to wonder if by putting out the bounty, he hadn't ended Duck's life already. Already. Before the world bore witness to the tragic crescendo of their feud, FBG Duck and King Vaughn were simply two aspiring artists from Chicago's South Side, each representing their respective neighborhoods and affiliations. The man at the center of this story, Carlton Weekly, popularly known as FBG Duck, was not just another name in the rap game. He was a symbol of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. FBG Duck was a member of the Flyboy Gang, an offshoot of the Gangster Disciples. His music often reflected the stark and violent realities of his upbringing resonating with many who shared similar experiences. Duck's rise to prominence came with tracks like Slide and Face, which became anthems in the drill music scene. On the other side stood King Von, a rapper with a magnetic storytelling ability, emerging from the notorious O Block. His affiliation with the Black Disciples and close ties to Lil Durk's OTF label gave him a platform that he used to catapult his career forward. Von's narrative-driven tracks like Crazy Story painted vivid pictures of the street life that both he and Duck knew all too well. The seeds of their rise Rivalry were sown early on, as both artists were entangled in the web of gang rivalries that plagued Chicago. The initial exchanges between Duck and Vaughn were subtle, often veiled references in their music and social media posts that those in the know could decipher as jabs at each other. As their profiles grew, so did the intensity of their exchanges. FBG Duck's bold demeanor and willingness to confront his adversaries head-on made him a formidable opponent in any beef. King Vaughn's calculated approach, using his lyrical prowess to craft stories that often had double meanings, 
added a layer of complexity to their conflict. The early stages of their beef set the stage for what would become a notorious chapter in Chicago's music history. Their words were more than lyrics. They were the narrations of their lives and the lives of those around them, a foreshadowing of the tragic events that would later unfold. The escalation of the beef between FBG Duck and King Vaughn was marked by a series of diss tracks and public exchanges that intensified their rivalry. It was a feud that played out in the open, for all to see and hear, as both artists used their music as a battleground. FBG Duck's track Slide had put him on the map, but it was his follow-up releases that fanned the flames of the conflict. In tracks like Exposing Me, Duck didn't hold back, calling out his rivals directly, naming members of the old block and 600 sets, challenging their street credibility, and mocking their deaths. FBG Duck's brazen lyrics and unapologetic delivery made it clear that he was not one to shy away from confrontation. King Vaughn was also in the habit of dissing his ops in his songs. For example, his hit Crazy Story was a masterclass in storytelling, but it was also rife with subliminal messages aimed at his enemies, including Duck. Vaughn's ability to weave tales of street life into his music made his responses more insidious, as listeners would dissect each line for hidden meanings and references to Duck and his associates. The back and forth continued with each artist dropping tracks that served as direct responses to the other. Social media became another arena for their feud, with both rappers taking to Instagram and Twitter to taunt each other with posts and live streams. At some point, it seemed as though things were about to take a peaceful turn when FBG Duck released a song titled Chicago Legends. However, any hope of peace was short-lived because the beef was up and running in full blast less than a few months later. One of the most significant moments in the escalation came when King Von released Took Her to the O, which included a fictional scenario involving FBG Duck. The song's narrative and accompanying music video depicted a violent encounter ending with Duck's character being shot. This provocative portrayal was not taken lightly by Duck, who saw it as a direct threat and a mockery of his stature. FBG Duck's retaliation came in the form of I'm from 63rd, a track that not only refuted Vaughn's claims but also accused him of lying to gain fame. Duck's lyrics were a mix of personal attacks and assertions of his authenticity, questioning Vaughn's credibility and his relationship with Lil Durk. The exchanges between Duck and Vaughn were more than just artists trading insults. They were emblematic of the deeper gang rivalries that had long plagued Chicago. Each diss track and each social media post was a reminder of the very real and dangerous world they inhabited. As the beef escalated, the lines between music and the streets blurred, setting the stage for a tragic outcome that would reverberate through the community and the music industry. As the beef reached its peak, the tension between FBG Duck and King Vaughn was palpable. Their music had become a microcosm of the larger issues at play in Chicago's street politics. In the summer of 2020, while the world grappled with a global pandemic and social upheaval, the beef between FBG Duck and King Vaughn came to a bloody end with FBG Duck's life being cut short. On a seemingly ordinary Tuesday, the unexpected horror struck. August 4th began like any other day for FBG Duck. He was out in Chicago's Gold Coast neighborhood, an area known for its luxury boutiques and affluent visitors. Duck was there for a purpose, to buy gifts for his son's birthday, a celebration of life that would soon be overshadowed by death. As Duck walked along the first block of East Oak Street, the atmosphere was calm, the sun high in the sky. But within moments, the serenity was shattered. At approximately 4.26 p.m., two vehicles, a Ford Fusion and a Chrysler 300, pulled up abruptly. The Fusion stopped just in front of a dark-colored sedan that Duck's girlfriend had driven. Without warning, two gunmen emerged from the Fusion, their weapons drawn and aimed with deadly precision. Duck, sensing the imminent danger, attempted to take cover behind his girlfriend's car, pulling another person with him in a desperate bid for safety. Almost simultaneously, two more assailants exited the Chrysler. One focused their gunfire on Duck's girlfriend, while the other joined in targeting Duck. The air was filled with the sounds of gunfire, screams, and chaos as bystanders fled in terror. In the immediate aftermath, the assailants made a swift escape, leaving behind a scene of devastation. Duck's girlfriend was left wounded, shot twice in the left wrist. The individual who had sought refuge with Duck was critically injured, suffering three gunshot wounds. And there on that upscale street lay FBG Duck, struck down in a hail of bullets. The police and emergency services arrived quickly, cordoning off the area and rushing to aid the victims. Duck was transported to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead shortly after his arrival. As the news of FBG Duck's murder spread like wildfire, the community reeled in shock. Fans, friends, and family members were left grappling with the reality of his sudden and violent death. The rapper, who had become a symbol of the struggle and resilience of Chicago's South Side, was now a headline in a tragic narrative that was all too familiar in the city's ongoing saga of gang violence. The public response was immediate and intense. Vigils were held, social media tributes poured in, and the hip-hop community mourned the loss of one of its own. FBG Duck's music, which had always been a raw reflection of his life, took on a new poignancy in the wake of his passing. The streets that had raised him were now the site of his demise, and the city was left
left to confront the harsh realities of the environment that had shaped him. Unending bloodshed. In the wake of the chaos that claimed the life of FBG Duck, law enforcement agencies were thrust into a high-stakes investigation, one that would require meticulous attention to detail and an unwavering commitment to justice. The streets of Chicago's Gold Coast had become a crime scene, and every second that passed was critical in piecing together the puzzle of Duck's murder. The first clue in the investigation came in the form of the two vehicles identified as part of the attack. These cars were not just incidental, they were key players in the orchestration of the shooting. Within a day of the incident, one of these vehicles was located and towed by investigators who hoped it would yield the evidence needed to track down those responsible. As the vehicle was searched, the pieces began to fall into place. Evidence found within the car implicated a man named Liggins, a lead that would open new avenues in the investigation. Surveillance footage from the Parkway Gardens area at 63rd and Martin Luther King Drive became the next focal point. The cameras had captured Liggins, along with a person known as Smart and others, in a hurried descent down a stairwell, moments that were critical in the timeline leading up to the murder. The footage further revealed revealed Smart and another individual entering the Ford Fusion, which was registered to a person named Offord. Meanwhile, Liggins was believed to have joined two others in the Chrysler 300. With these details, investigators could now trace the movements of the suspects from Parkway Gardens to the scene of the crime. Utilizing an intricate network of video surveillance and police pod cameras, the investigative team tracked the vehicle's path. The Fusion and Chrysler were seen traveling in the same direction, just five seconds apart, in the 6200 block of South Wentworth. They appeared on camera at at least seven additional locations, their journey meticulously documented as they converged on East Oak Street. The 45-page document, later unsealed in court, provided a minute-by-minute -minute account of the events that transpired. It detailed how the Fusion and Chrysler came to a stop just in front of the sedan driven by Duck's girlfriend. The document described the calculated manner in which the assailants exited their vehicles and opened fire, leaving no doubt about the premeditated nature of the attack. As the investigation progressed, the authorities faced the daunting task of not only identifying all involved, but also understanding the motive behind the shooting. The rivalry between the STL, EBT, and O Block factions, Duck's affiliation with the former, and the history of violence between these groups provided a backdrop for investigators as they worked to untangle the web of gang dynamics that may have led to this tragic event. The murder of FBG Duck was not a random act of violence. It was a targeted strike, one that underscored the grim reality of gang warfare in Chicago. The investigation continued, with law enforcement determined to bring those responsible to justice and to shed light on the circumstances that led to the untimely death of FBG Duck. Social media, often a platform for bravado and posturing within the rap and gang communities, became a treasure trove of evidence. Posts that seemed innocuous at first glance were scrutinized, revealing a trail of breadcrumbs that led investigators to the individuals responsible for the attack. Five people are now charged with the deadly and brazen Gold Coast shooting of rapper FBG Duck. Law enforcement members say the suspects are allegedly a part of the old block gang. The suspects Suspects, now identified as Charles Liggins, Kenneth Roberson, Christopher Thomas, Marcus Smart, to Carlos Offord, and Ralph Turpin, were apprehended in a series of coordinated raids. The precision with which these operations were executed spoke to the gravity of the crime and the determination of law enforcement to see justice served. Each arrest brought the city one step closer to closure, though the wounds of FBG Duck's murder remained fresh. The evidence that led to their arrest was multifaceted. Ballistic analysis linked the firearms used in the shooting to the suspects, while cell phone records placed them at the scene. The prosecution built a case around the narrative that this was a premeditated act, a murder in aid of racketeering, and a conspiracy that had been carefully orchestrated. The suspects, purportedly members or associates of the O Block faction of the Black Disciples, were believed to have targeted FBG Duck as part of an ongoing gang feud that had turned the streets of Chicago into a battleground. The trial of the six men accused in the murder of FBG Duck was a high-stakes legal battle that captivated the city of Chicago. The prosecution presented surveillance footage that captured the chill moments of the attack, painting a vivid picture of the calculated ambush. Eyewitness accounts corroborated the video evidence, adding human testimony to the digital record. The prosecution argued that the murder was a calculated act, rooted in the gang rivalry that had claimed so many lives on the south side of Chicago. They pointed to the defendants' alleged affiliations with the O Block faction of the Black Disciples and posited that FBG Duck's death was a targeted strike in this ongoing war. After days of testimony and legal wrangling, the jury retreated to deliberate the fate of 
the six men. The verdict, when it came, was a decisive moment in the saga of FBG Duck's murder. Some of the charges brought against the men include murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and using a gun concerning the shooting. Alleged members of Chicago's O Block gang have been convicted in the 2020 murder of a rapper known as FBG Duck. Despite the fact that these six men had been prosecuted for the murder of FBG Duck, many people still held on to the belief that King Von was largely connected to the murder, with some going as far as calling him the mastermind. While it was never confirmed that the bounty placed on FBG, Duck's life resulted in his death. The fact that he was killed by members of the O Block faction awakened the suspicions of many people. To make matters worse, eyewitnesses claimed that King Von celebrated the murder of FBG Duck by purchasing new chains for his associates in O Block, a stronghold of the Black Disciples and the reputed base of operations for King Von. This act of ostentatious celebration, if true, was a stark reminder of the value placed on loyalty and retribution within the gang hierarchy. It was a display that spoke volumes, not just of the spoils of war, but of the depths to which this conflict had sunk. The chains, symbols of unity and triumph within O Block, were now tainted with the blood of a rival, a tangible reminder of the life that had been claimed. As the city grappled with the aftermath of FBG Duck's murder, the alleged connection between King Vaughn and the shooters only added to the complexity of the case. Marcus Muop Smart, identified by the witness as one of the alleged perpetrators, was said to have carried out several murders on behalf of O Block, suggesting a web of violence and retribution that extended far beyond a single act. The gun used in the murder, according to reports, was linked to a dozen other cases, painting a grim picture of the cycle of violence that had ensnared the city. It was a cycle that King Vaughn and FBG Duck had both been a part of, their music a testament to the lives they led and the world they inhabited, a world where disputes were settled not with words, but with bullets. However, in a shocking turn of events, King Vaughn was gunned down a few months after he celebrated the death of FBG Duck. King Vaughn's foray into the rap scene was not just an escape, but a necessity, a way to channel the raw experiences of his youth into a force that could propel him beyond the confines of his environment. His storytelling prowess quickly set him apart with a gripping lyrical style that painted vivid pictures of life on the streets. It was this authenticity that caught the ear of fellow Chicago rapper Lil Durk, who took Vaughn under his wing, recognizing the potential of his gritty narratives and unflinching honesty. Together, they crafted tracks that throbbed with the pulse of Chicago, tracks that spoke to the heart of the drill scene. King Vaughn's music was more than entertainment. It was a lifeline to those who felt unseen, a voice for the voiceless in the urban sprawl. His rise in the music industry was meteoric, a testament to his talent and the hunger for stories that spoke truth to power. In the cutthroat world of the music industry, King Vaughn carved out a space where his narrative could flourish, where the beats of his songs became the heartbeat of a community. His impact on fellow artists was undeniable, as he collaborated with names like Pop Smoke and NLE Choppa. King Vaughn's ascent in the rap game was as compelling as his lyrics, with a narrative that captivated audiences far beyond the streets of Chicago. His mixtapes, Grandson, Vol One Inch, and Levon James were more than just collections of songs. They were chapters in an ongoing saga, each track a window into Vaughn's world. These works, gritty and unapologetic, charted on Billboard's top R&B slash hip-hop albums. But it was his album, Welcome to O Block, that became the cornerstone of his legacy. Released just a week before his untimely death, the album was a culmination of his experiences, a testament to his life, and the lives of those who had walked similar paths. However, just a week after he released the album, King Vaughn's life was tragically cut short. On the night of November 5th, 2020, the Monaco Hookah Lounge, nestled in the heart of downtown Atlanta, would become the scene of an unforeseen murder. The lounge was abuzz with the usual throng of revelers, the air thick with music and conversation. In the early morning hours, as the clock edged towards 3.30 a.m., a series of events began to unfold, events that would culminate in tragedy. The atmosphere that night was charged, a palpable tension beneath the surface of the festivities. The significance of the location, a known gathering spot in the Atlanta social scene, added an element of shock to the events that would soon transpire. It was in this setting, under the cloak of darkness, that two groups of men found themselves embroiled in a heated argument. It was unclear what sparked the confrontation, but the outcome was devastatingly clear, a dispute that escalated into a violent altercation. In the midst of this brewing storm, an off-duty Atlanta police officer, working a second job at the lounge, and a patrol officer nearby found themselves thrust into the chaos. Their training kicked in as they confronted the gunmen, an attempt to quell the rising tide of aggression. Gunshots rang out, a cacophony of echoes bouncing off the buildings as the officers engaged in a desperate bid to restore order. King Vaughn was caught in the crossfire during this initial shootout. It was not at the hands of law enforcement, but amid the exchange between the two feuding parties that Vaughn was struck down. In the aftermath, as sirens wailed and the wounded cried out, Vaughn was hurriedly transported to the hospital in a 
private vehicle, a race against time to save the rapper's life. Six individuals were wounded in the shootout and were quickly taken to the hospital by ambulances. However, three of them, including King Vaughn, lost their lives to that event. In the immediate aftermath, the police detained two individuals near the lounge, their potential involvement in the incident, a subject for investigation. The community awaited answers, the rap world held its breath, and the authorities worked to piece together the sequence of events that led to such a tragic outcome. In the wake of the tragedy that unfolded outside the Monaco Hookah Lounge, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation took the helm, delving into the intricate web of events that led to the untimely death of King Vaughn the GBI alongside Atlanta police, embarked on a meticulous investigation, piecing together witness statements, surveillance footage, and forensic evidence in a bid to uncover the truth behind the fatal shooting. As the city grappled with the loss of a rising music star, a breakthrough in the case emerged. Timothy Leakes, known in the rap community as Lul Team, was identified as the shooter responsible for King Von's death. A 22-year-old man named Timothy Leakes is reportedly facing felony murder charges in connection with the death of King Von. The arrest of Leakes marked a significant turn in the investigation, bringing a semblance of justice to a grieving fan base and a rap community in shock. Timothy Leakes had a beginning as humble as any. Born and raised in the historic city of Savannah, Leakes walked the same streets as many youths, dreaming of a future bright with potential. A graduate of Jenkins High School in 2016, he was known for his athleticism, taking to the field in varsity football, a team player in the most literal sense. Leakes had earlier been arrested in August 2020 for attempting to violate the Georgia Controlled Substance Act, theft by receiving stolen property, and obstruction. The investigation's haul included a seizure of guns, over 16 pounds of marijuana, and nearly $16,000. This brush with the law, however, was only a prelude to the events that would catapult Leakes into the glaring spotlight of public scrutiny. 22-year-old Timothy Leakes was immediately charged with felony murder. The charge was as severe as it was swift, signaling the gravity of the incident and the loss of a life that had barely begun to realize its potential. King Vaughn, an artist on the cusp of greatness, had been silenced, and Timothy Leakes was now the prime suspect in his murder. Leakes would be granted release from the confines of Fulton County Jail, but not not without stringent conditions. The bond was set at a staggering $100,000, a sum that underscored the severity of the charges against him. Upon posting the required amount, Leakes' release was secured, but his freedom would be tethered. Fitted with an ankle monitor, his movements would be tracked, a constant reminder of the gravity of his alleged actions and the watchful eye of the law. The community's reaction was a maelstrom of emotion. Some expressed outrage, unable to fathom how someone charged with such a heinous crime could walk free, even if only temporarily. Others saw it as a necessary step in the legal process, a testament to the principle that one is innocent until proven guilty. As the news rippled through the streets of Atlanta and beyond, it reignited the debate on justice, the legal system, and the value of life in the face of violence. The release of Timothy Leakes became yet another chapter in the ongoing narrative of King Von's tragic demise, a narrative that continued to captivate and divide public opinion. The legal proceedings that followed have been closely watched, with each development scrutinized by the public and media alike. As of the latest updates, the specifics of Leakes' legal situation remain a topic of discussion, with reports in October 2022 claiming he faced additional legal challenges, including an arrest on drug charges. The current whereabouts of Timothy Leakes are not widely known, shrouded in the privacy that often accompanies ongoing legal matters. What is clear, however, is that the legal journey stemming from the events of that fateful November morning is far from over. The investigation and subsequent proceedings serve as a stark reminder of the enduring consequences of violence violence and the long arm of the law that seeks to address such acts. The music industry has seen tons of rappers engage in decade-long feuds born out of gangsterism. It is however disheartening that many young rappers have lost their lives in these feuds, 